Psalm chapter 101, a Psalm of David. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Well, I can see you singing of mercy, but judgment? Must be someone who's singing who is innocent. Who has no fear of being judged. Listen, the ones that hate the police are the ones that cause the police, the police trouble and problems. Plain and simple. Now, I've had run-ins with the police many a time. And I've been innocent. I've got a public ministry. People call the cops on me. And I have no cops come walking up to me. i got no problem. Because mostly 95% of the time, I'm innocent and I've done nothing wrong. And I will sing of the judgment of God. God found me to be innocent and they're in, the ones in trouble. And every single man is going to be judged. Are you saying, Stiley, you're perfect and all that? No, I'll find wood, hay, or stubble when I get judged at the seat of Christ. I'll come up with dust and ashes. David's singing about judgment here because David's done right and somebody's done wrong. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. David puts no respect and no honor to other men but God. And it's plain and simple. I will behave myself wisely in the perfect way. And that has been the Holy Spirit testimony of David throughout the scripture. When Saul has been his enemy, the Bible proclaims to us, and David behaved himself. And when we're being attacked and we're being brought to trial and we're being accused and we're being assaulted and we're being lied about and we're being suffrage and Jesus kept his mouth shut. And the Bible says without guile. That's behaving yourself. When all the world is against you and it's going to be against you, you don't fight back. Just take it, trust the Lord, he'll take care of it. You don't lose your temper. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me, David? I will walk within my house, my house. Not the tabernacle, not his house. With a perfect heart. Yeah, that heart, that perfect doesn't mean 100%. David's a sinner, we're all sinners. But as the best of the ability that David or I or anybody does not in a throne though he lives in the castle my house i'm gonna up, i'm gonna walk upright and when it comes to uh bishops and deacons to timothy paul writes and says you ought to have order in your own house You can't rule your house. How can you rule the church of God? I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. That's an interesting word, set, because it's called a television set. A computer, a video, media, media. If it's wicked, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to view it. I'm not going to have less of, less of the eyes. David said. And yet when David sinned. What was it? He saw a woman watching herself. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not wicked. You see plenty of women. They'll do natural things. But it's that second or third watch looking that gets you in trouble 
That wasn't set before his eyes. That was already there. People say, why do they call it a television set? Because it's only one. King James Bible, 1611, Psalms 101, verse 3. I hate the work of them that turn aside. The Bible says, do you hate the things that the Lord hates? You got people out there who turn aside from God. He hate it. Not them. The work. Corinthians says we're the judge things, not the people. When churches go on the side from the word of God and done their own worldly thing. I hate it. It shall not cleave attach to me. <coughs> Don't let it stick to you. Because they're doing it, don't you be doing it. A forward that means perverse. Quite opposite of repentance. A forward heart, quite opposite verse 2, a perfect heart, shall depart from me. Who's your assembly of friends and neighbors and family? Are they a wicked and perverse? Have they not felt the Holy Spirit working in your life? Say, you know what? I don't want to have anything to do with you. I have. I've had even King James, Bible-believing Christian. You're too radical for me. What? Living the Bible, doing right? Oh, I, I take your stance and what you believe, but I, yeah, your I and opposite of the Bible. You fell off the wagon, not me. I'm staying on God's wagon, I'm riding God's wagon. You're mad at me because I, I quote the Bible and I tell you what the Bible says. I can't. I will not know a wicked person. Well, we know wicked people all the time. They're all around us. David saying, I am not going to have a personal relationship, a personal finance. I am not dealing with the wicked. Politicians lie to you. They're wicked. I ain't going to know one of them. And I ain't going to spend my time to... To waste what you call a vote. I know Jesus Christ is sinless. I know Jesus Christ is pure. I know Jesus Christ is innocent. I know Jesus Christ is the way to truth. I'll spend my time on him. And you find me a Christian that loves the Lord, serves the Lord, and is a doer of the word. I'll give my time to him. Whoso privately, secretly, with no one knowing, slandereth his neighbor. Man, that happens everywhere. It's double tongue. You're talking about your neighbor, you're talking about somebody you know outside of their presence to somebody else. And when David's saying neighbor and the law speaks about neighbor, that's anybody. Listen, that ain't just a next door day, next door neighbor. Okay. You take where I live, Daytona Beach. That could be my next door neighbor, right over there. That could be the neighbor in the next street that I live around. A neighbor could also be Oak Hill, South Daytona, the land. Those are my neighbors. My neighbors may be Georgia or Mississippi. Those are my neighbors. Canada or Mexico. When did we get the thing? Oh, it's got to be the next door neighbor. It doesn't say next door neighbor. The neighbor. And that could be Jewish or Gentile.
Whoso privily slandered, that means lie in court. A legal liar. Him will I cut off. David, the king, the ruler. You lied to your neighbor? You lied about somebody? You lied about a Jew? You lied about... Get out of here. Get out of my court. I like what Judge Judy said. You know, if you lie to me, where is your testimony? You lie before a judge, the judge has no more right to listen to you in anything you say because you have proved your character to be untrustworthy. The Bible says in the law, if you lie against your neighbor, the sentence that would happen to the person you lied about would happen to you. You know how many people would have been crucified on Passover day about 33 AD? Many. You say, where do you get that from? There were many false witnesses that went before the court and slandered themselves to try to kill Jesus. And the law says those were to be the ones to be crucified, not Jesus. Him that has a high look. Well, what's that mean? And a proud heart. Pride. Will I not suffer? Will I not allow? I'm not even going to give that guy an opportunity. Christians are proud, proud of their church, proud of their Baptist name, proud of their title, proud of position, proud to be American, proud. That's called S-I-N. Even if you put the name Christian tag on it, it is still called a sin. Pride is a sin. And it's an attribute of God that you will never find. It is pride of the devil and it is pride of the original sin of David. I mean, excuse me, the devil. I will exalt my throne above God. His throne was already above God. As far as placement. My eye. Talked a lot about I shall be upon the faithful of the land, Israel, Jewish, David, the land of Israel. Who am I going to look at? I'm going to look at the faith, the faith, the faithful. Well, David, you only did that with Bathsheba. You only did that with Uriah. Where are you going to find anybody faithful today? That's the scripture. Where, where could I find someone faithful? You know, the fact is that God sent Jesus Christ because he couldn't find anybody faithful. You know why God had to have Deborah in the book of Judges? Because there was no one faithful. You know why Sister was, was done in by a woman? Because there was no man, man enough faithful. And the Bible tells you in the future there's coming a time there's gonna, not going to be enough men. There's women, seven women are going to, something like that. They're going to grab one man and say, you know, let us be under your house and we'll eat, we'll, we'll take care of ourselves, but we want to be called by thy name. There are many men in churches today. They ain't the man. And with this coronavirus and churches sh shut down, they haven't stepped up to be the, the spiritual leader, the priest of their house, of the word of God. They don't know nothing. Ain't no faithful men. You know, faithful men is supposed to be one of the characteristics of the deacons. And pastor, you're going to find out the judgment seat of Christ. A lot of your deacons are not faithful and are going to suffer loss as you will because you've chosen them. Because they're friends. Because they're your buddy. Because they're your clique. Because I like them. That ain't no qualifications for the scripture. And you'll find yourself at sin. Ooh, I'm kicking today. That they may dwell with me. They said, I want to dwell in a faithful man. So their faithfulness will rub on me. My faithfulness will rub on them. And we'll just continue to grow in faithfulness. 
He that walketh and dwelleth with me. Man, those two men on the road to Emmaus, they were talking about Jesus. They are talking about everything Jesus done, and Jesus came up, and it came even greater and glorified. And then Jesus revealed himself even more. They weren't pride. Man, they sat there when Jesus revealed himself. Man, why didn't we see anything? Today they whip out there. Oh, see my see my diploma? I know more than you, sir. And he's talking to Jesus. Look how great we are. Look how wonderful we are. Look how ah! Jesus says, You're naked, miserable, poor, blind, and you make me sick. David says, Those kind of people I don't want. David would have loved the Philadelphia church age, and he would puke with Jesus the Laodicean church age. And I am part of the Laodicean church age, and I ain't no one to boast of, because I don't do all I should do for God. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Who's going to be in David's army? Who's going to be in David's uh, kingly court and amongst the men of David? Men that are faithful and men that work walk the perfect way. You know Uriah is named in the, the soldiers of David. Yes he is. Is he there because David killed him? No. I'll tell you it's he's there because Uriah loved the Lord. How do you know that? Because David wanted to get him drunk and go home and sleep with his wife so he can add look at there's a baby. Uriah said to the Lord he uh, to David he says the children of Israel, Joab, are sleeping in tents. The Ark of the Covenant is in battle. And you want me to go home and sleep with my wife? Uriah loved the Lord. Uriah loved Joab. And Uriah loved David. Well, say, Sally, see that? You ought to love the United States. The United States don't love God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And the leader of this country and leaders of this country, they don't love God. I don't love them. They don't walk with what David said, hey. I'll tell you right now, I, there's people I know, there's three people. I say, come in my house, we'll sit down, we'll dine with the Lord. If Donald Trump came to my door and Nancy Pelosi came to my uh, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Well, we want to come have, get out of my house. Don't you bring that filthy politics and those filthy lies in your religion in my house. I wouldn't allow them in my house just as much as I don't allow the Jehovah Witnesses in my house. I don't want faithful men who love the Lord and do right and want to seek to do right and want to continue more God's blessing. I don't want no filthy liars and filthy slander and filthy people. Donald Trump, he's got so much pride, which we talked about. He's going to read our nation into victory after having seven bankruptcies and how many wives? The guy can't even handle a marriage. He's going to handle the country. You guys are fools. Here's the answer. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. David won't house used car salesmen politicians, and anybody that works the seat. David would not have it. He that telleth lies, liars, shall not tarry and might get out of here. My wife, Lisa, doing the nursery. They had women there talking secretly about other women and their neighbors came and dressed me about it. She said she got tired of it. I told her, well, I said, go tell the nursery director. She went to the nursery director and said, I don't want to work with them no more. Unless I absolutely have to, and there's no one else I will work with them, but by I don't want to work with those people. They're slanderers. They're gossips. You know what many Christians would do today? Would you hear? Really? Let me tell you what I hear. Hey, 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 h
KBABB, KBABB. I'll, I'll go up to a path, a pastor, all my time. I say, listen, you know, somebody not been in church, somebody, I say, pastor, you know, how, are they okay? And he'll start going. I said, no, just want to know if he's okay. I want to know if he's all right. Does he need prayer? I don't need to know that extra information. You don't need to know it all. I will early. David would offend people. Can you imagine David saying, Get out of here. What? Don't you want to hear? You know how you end gossip? Did you hear what I hear? Nope. I had, I had one time. Was it, who was it? Was it a Christian? Yeah, it was in a church. Guy go, hey, you want to hear what I hear? No. Oh, you got, no. Well, you got it. No. And he starts talking. I walked away from the guy. I go over there. I talk, I'm talking to somebody else. I look up. He's talking to nobody. Think he's telling me what it's the gospel. Sometimes they don't even get the point. I got one guy one time. Okay, let's call the guy over here. We'll talk with him. Oh, no. 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 You're not going to tell the guy who you're talking about with the guy right here? If you're not going to tell the guy right here, don't you tell me. I will destroy, early, early destroy all the wicked from the land. That's Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus Christ will do when he comes in the second advent. Jesus Christ won't put up with it. You can boo who you want. You're guilty. He's going to call you guilty. He's going to get you guilty. And if you're not under the blood, you're in the lake of fire. The Lord, I did The Lord, I did Depart from me, you work as iniquity. I never knew. That's not nice. But it's holy and right. That I may cut off all wicked doers. Now, that's not David. David had to cut himself off. For all have sinned and come short of it. That's Jesus Christ. From the city of the Lord, that's Jerusalem and gets Advent. That's second Advent. We'll find out who's right and wrong one day by Jesus. And many Christians are going to find out their favorites are wrong. And they're going to find the least esteem among the people. They're going to find out they're the ones that were right. Paul had a whole bunch of people that he thought were wrong. And Jesus told Paul, why persecute thou me? You better watch who you honor, who you want to have fellowship, who you praise, and who you talk about. Because Jesus said in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 12, man shall give an account of every idle word. That plain and simple. That plain and simple. 